Hey, what's up YouTube? Just gonna bring a video to you today to talk about what I feel are the five must-haves upgrades for a Suron or an E-Moto for off-road riding. So we're talking about off-road riding, what are the five must-haves? So, and this is strictly my opinion. I've had my bike for over two years now. I've got two Surons. And uh, some of the things that I wish I had done like right out of the gate is what I'm gonna talk about. So first of all, let's start with the obvious. The foot pegs. The stock foot pegs on almost every E-Moto, I would say even the E-Ride Pro, even though they're better than all the others, they still probably need an upgrade and, and um, they're trash, really. I didn't really know how bad they were until I upgraded them. And so that's why it's like top of my list. It's something that you should do right out of the gate. I got mine for like 30 bucks on Amazon. You can get some Warp 9 ones that are probably better, but if you don't want to spend that much, there are budget options and uh yeah you can get some of those and pick them up and make your life a lot better because those stock foot pigs are complete garbage all right let's talk about the second upgrade i would do and i think this goes for most people that are buying surrounds anyway and i would say that that's the handlebars the stock bars are flat the riding position is very hunched over and for off-road riding we're talking about you stand up a lot to ride on your bike to maintain control and if you're leaning over too forward you don't have very good control so you need some riser bars like two and a half three and a half inch riser bars or a stem riser that would be ideal so that's my number two option like must have and that again i think you can get the two and a half inch riser bar from luna Luna cycle for like $29, $30. So again, another $30 upgrade, very cheap, makes a huge difference, especially for off-road riding where you're doing a lot of standing and need that control. You don't want to be leaning over too far. So that's number two. Number three, if you're doing like tons of trail riding off-road again, I would say it's the upgraded bash guard. I ruined my bash guard, my stock bash guard, immediately within the first month of having the bike and I had to buy a new one. So that was probably one of my first upgrades on this bike was just the bash guard. So getting a new bash guard, you can get, I got mine from Luna Cycle. You can get them all over the place, but uh, again, you don't want to be messing up your motor. That's an expensive piece to be breaking. So the minute you hit one rock on that flimsy stock bash guard and it comes up against your motor, and then you hit another rock. Now you're impacting your motor. You're going to break it. You're going to break motor mounts. And then you're spending six to 600 to 1,000 bucks for a new motor. So that's number three. What else do we got? I would say number four is the tires. Out of the gate, these Surons come with 19 inch front and rear. And, uh, it's fine to keep those, but the stock tires themselves are very, pretty much garbage and super cheap with no traction at all. And if you're doing an off-road riding, I highly recommend getting at least at the minimum a 16 inch rear with a fat knobby. It will help you on trails and help you in the dirt. And uh, getting that 16 inch rear also gives you, because of the smaller rotational circumference of that wheel, you're getting a higher gearing. It's like getting a bigger sprocket. So with a 16 inch rear, you get more torque, helps you climb hills, helps you climb the dirt, doing the things that you want to do. If you get something like I have on this bike, which is a, a 1821, then you're going to need a bigger sprocket to get that torque. So I also have a 58 tooth sprocket on here. It's a much more expensive option, but the advantage of an 1821 is that it handles all the little rocks and bumps and stuff very well because the wheels are bigger. You just roll over that stuff. But I think that the 
16 19 setup you can only you don't have to upgrade the front tire you can just do the rear get that it's cheap adds a bunch of torque climbing capabilities gives you tons of bonus and then you just change out the tire on your front 19 inch stock wheel and you're looking good so yeah that's a huge upgrade that's number four number five i would say since you're doing a lot of climbing lots of maneuvering on crazy terrain i would say that the the seat cover these stock seat covers aren't great they're not very grippy you slide around a lot and uh, you don't want to be slipping around while you're in some technical area so keep that in mind seat covers you can get them from thrill seekers or guts uh, i got my both mine on both bikes are from thrill seekers they do a custom logo and uh you can do that they're about the same price i think guts might be a little bit cheaper but i think mine's only more expensive because i did the customization and did the uh the name on it so but yeah thrill seekers or guts get a grippy seat cover you can get them for all bikes i think both companies do all the different emotos so i think that makes a huge difference you don't want to be stuck on that stock, stock uh, seat cover you, it just slides around so that's number five i got two bonus two bonus things i would want to put out there and one of them is the mud guard that's covering the rear shock and i'm going to show the image here the mud guard is kind of key for protecting that rear suspension from mud if you're riding trails like i do you're going to run into muddy days you're going up the hill and that shock is going to get covered in mud and you're just going to end up blowing it out or making it worse and you don't want to do that shocks are expensive so a nice cheap mud guard this one i have is pretty cheap i think I, I paid like 10 bucks for it because it's just like a piece of plastic you can make your own buy a cheap shower curtain online cut something out and put it on your bike it doesn't have to be anything fantastic but it protects the shock so bonus number one mud guard for the rear bonus number two is this air wedge and they use these to pry open windows to get into locked cars or cars that have the keys locked in them um, but they make a great way to stop the rattle of your battery in the bike you know you're riding this around especially off roads that battery starts working its way loose mashing everything around inside the, the little cabin there and then eventually it just starts knocking and that shit drive you crazy you just listen to that over and over again and you want to pull your hair out so bonus number two get this little air wedge in there and i'm going to show you what it looks like here when you ride these surrounds off road a lot this battery makes a lot of noise so if you don't want that kind of stuff and you want to reduce that rattle you can get one of these this is just like an air wedge airbag you just slide it down in there like so you pump it up no more rattle you just tuck the ball in this little clamp to make sure it doesn't leak air tuck the ball in there like so shut it up your bike doesn't rattle those are my upgrades that I would recommend if you're doing off-road riding which is pretty much what I love to do it's all I really do then these are the kind of the must-haves like it's not expensive I'm not saying go out and get a crazy controller or power upgrades if you get that 16 inch rear you're going to get more torque out of your bike and it will make up for the weight that you're adding there's a lot of things that you can do and, and that's the most expensive of these upgrades is that rear wheel which i think you can get one for three to four hundred bucks and <clears throat> that's the most expensive everything else is really cheap that i'm mentioning here so makes the suron a lot better or your or your emoto whatever you're riding and uh handling that terrain out or our off-road which is what we love so anyway guys that wraps up my list of 
your must-haves for doing off-road riding on your Emoto. I'm talking about the smaller Emotos here. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, like and subscribe. And uh, I appreciate you guys always. And we'll catch you on the next one. Until then, keep the rubber side down.